What's up guys, Matt here, back with another video. Here we are, we are in this brand new tour, enjoying this exploration tour with some new drivers, some new carts, some new gliders, um, and of course, Piranha Plant Cove with two different sets of variants. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, and here we are with a spotlight video. So this series is all about looking at what's new, what's hot, and what's at the top in Mario Kart Tour. So we're looking at the drivers, the carts, the gliders that are lo worth looking into and investing. And of course, we're using the Ticket Time app. So a massive shout out to Flo, um, who is the developer of Ticket Time. If you haven't tried it yet, everything that I look at today is in a vacuum. And Ticket Time is about plugging in your own inventory to get your own unique set of rankings. And we have the exciting opportunity to look at someone in my server's rankings today to see what their best upgrades are to show and showcase some of the new features in Ticket Time and show how to interpret the output that you get from the app. So hopefully it makes Ticket Time that much more accessible for people to use. We love using it. We would not upgrade anything without checking our Ticket Time output first. It makes your life so much easier um, using the BGR sheets are great, but this takes it just to that next level. So um, let's take a look at what's new both in the Ticket Time app and let's take a look at what's new in the game as well. I'm really excited to bring this for you. And um, very first up, we're gonna take a look at the Spotlight Shop and what's new there. Not really much of an interesting Spotlight Shop this tour, unfortunately. Um, we do have lots of great items um, in there, but at this point, you've probably considered them already. Um, so looking first at the drivers, um, we've got Kamek in there, Luigi Knight, uh, a couple plus skill options there, which are great, um, but you know, don't get me wrong, but we've had a, a, a lot of a chance um, at those ones, as well as PD Piranha 2, and of course, we've got the same gold drivers in there right now. Man, they just need to put Mario King in the spotlight shop. I know some might disagree with that, but uh, I think it's time. I think it's time. And then looking at the carts, there are a few newer ones, uh, but there are obviously so many carts in the game. Um, Blazing Eagle and the Swift Talon are two interesting ones to look at. Of course, the Streeter was doing very well in the rankings, and we will see that shortly. Um, other ones, we've got the Blue Speeder. I think that might be the first time that's there. The Moomoo Off-Roader, if you haven't picked that up, I highly recommend picking that one up there. Um, the Pink Speeder has been quite nice as well. Um, the Red Off-Roader, of course, of course, is really strong. So probably the focus would be on some of those carts this store. If you haven't picked them up, definitely check your rankings to see if any of them would be good for you. Um, and then as an illustration, I actually bought a cart on my main account last tour, which is the Sweet Rider. I didn't expect to buy it. I've looked at that that sweet ride a lot of times but it just kind of it was needed in rank last week and it just had a lot of great value for my account at a level six and a double cap so I ended up purchasing that cart and investing into it um, deciding that's probably as far as I'll take that cart because it's not really at the top but it was good enough to give me a decent 10 to 15 courses which made sense for the account um, so that's just an example of how you might use the the rankings to interact with your spotlight shop um, then looking at the gliders, we do have uh, ones, you'll see the 8-bit mushroom right in the centre there staring at me, you know, being awesome. Um, we've also got, you know, Murray's Hat Balloon, the Icy Murray's Moustache, Parapanini, um, what else is in there? The Black Star Shoot, Boo Masks, these are all pretty relatively meta items. And then of course we do need to mention the some of these uh, gold items as well. Um, so that's the spotlight shop there, some... Yeah, some all right items, some average items too. Um, of course, it's worth mentioning in the in this section up here, um, the gliders that are appearing more. We do also have the silver candlelight flight and the wonderful topaz, two quite interesting gliders as well. So let's go ahead and take a look and talk about what's new in the Ticket Time app. And then we're going to actually look at... Uh, Crunchy Cheese, one of our Discord members, shout out to you dude, um, I hope that looking at your account helps you out in terms of your rankings and in terms of understanding what your best upgrades are and what are some different strategies that you can use to upgrade your best items. So let's go ahead now and take a look at what's new in Ticket Time. So as Flo mentioned in the reaction video, he has been putting a lot of work into some new features of Ticket Time. And stay tuned to the channel and let me know down below if you're keen, because we're keen to record a video 
of all the basics of Ticket Time and how it works. The How to Use Ticket Time app video, which we recorded a wee while back, I'll put a link up, up in this video as well. It's a little bit outdated now. It's been out there a while, and in that video, we use the output, which is a set of Excel sheets. But now, the rankings are all online. You get a dynamic link, which you can access at any time, and there's all sorts of features coming. So let's take a quick look. Firstly, there's an average item level input selection, and this just chooses the level of or the amount of tickets that you have to spend based on the kind of player you are. So if you're like a, a free-to-play type account, less than 4.5 is, is appropriate for, for those type of accounts. Um, and then 4.5 to 6.5 is more appropriate for gold pass accounts or maybe mid-level spend accounts. And for people 6.5 and above, these are high spender accounts, usually continuous top 100 type players. Um, so of course you can mess around and see what the difference is, but essentially all it's doing is changing how many tickets it assumes you're going to spend. So generally I would say be conservative if you prefer to have a conservative approach. That means you're getting the best bang for your buck in terms of the rankings that are recommended. Um, then in terms of the inventory page, we've got th three new sections, item rankings, the best item combinations, and the best loadout. And we'll go have a look at those three different sections in a moment. Um, but essentially, by default now, it will show you your item rankings, but the best item combinations, uh, that optimal combinations, which is that feature that came in last tour, that one there only shows once you choose to compute it. And that's just to save a little bit of time and stress on the server. Obviously a lot of people using ticket time and um, there is a little bit of a delay just with the sheer amount of mathematics involved in computing the best combinations. Um, so of course you can go ahead and use it, but it's just a couple of extra clicks just to save on compute time. Um, and then in the best loadout section, which is a new section, this is similar if you ever use the old output from Ticket Time, there was a spreadsheet called best loadout. Basically, it allows you to be able to look on, at every single course to see the summarized information of the best loadout there. This can be really good if you're really trying to dig into the details, um, but for most people, the item ranking, clicking through on the item title and looking at the item inspector is probably the best way to be looking at the upgrades that you could make. So some really great uh, features and updates. Massive shout out to Flo, the developer of the app. Make sure to join us on Discord. I'll chuck a link in the description down below and let us know how you go with Ticket Time. I've been getting a lot of comments recently, people saying, I love Ticket Time. I'm starting to use Ticket Time. It's a, it's a core part of my strategy. So really cool to see. We want this tool to be in your hands. That's why there is no fees. There is no, uh, not even a donation page right now uh, because we want Ticket Time to be there for the community and to serve that purpose. So stays that way for now. And um, yeah, make sure you make sure to check it out. Cool, all right, um, so there we go. I will show you now, um, let's jump into uh, some rankings and, and see and take a look at what we've got. So this is Crunchy Cheese's rankings and we're gonna first take a look at an overview of the ticket time page. So we've got the item rankings section here which is looking at its best upgrades which we'll take a look at in a moment. Then you can see the best item combinations which we will compute in a moment as well. Um, and then the best loadout section, quite a cool new section here where it breaks down and you can of course look at all the details of the different courses but there's a great summary section here which I absolutely love where you can see the average driver cart level um, driver base points and so on and so forth uh, you can also see that the, the driver skill distribution this is broken down by course repeats or course appearance rate so it's not just a, a flat look at how many you know, coin box drivers you're using, but it's also extrapolated over the amount of courses that return and how often those courses return. So of course, you know, if you've got coin box on some of the battle courses and the battle courses are really turning all the time, that will amplify coin box here. And then looking at the cart dis hitbox distribution, this shows how well you're doing at getting some of those larger carts. And of course, that is personal preference. Um, so looking at this for a start with Crunchy Cheese, we can see that he has pretty stellar loadouts. 6.67 for driver level, 6.24 for cart level, and 6.49 for glider level. So obviously carts being a little bit less is maybe a work on area, um, but also for, a, for, a, for great loadouts like that, it might be also thinking thinking about what needs to go to level seven and what needs to go to level eight as the priority for the account. So we'll see that as we look into the item rankings. Let's check that out right now. So looking first at the drivers, 
And top of the list, we've got Goldman Racing Suit, which he currently has at level seven and triple capped. The recommendation is only eight level up tickets to take it to level eight and triple capped. Interesting that it isn't recommending a quad cap there, um, but this will be based on the uh, the score, the game per ticket, 38,815. So Goldman, not quite as strong in terms of appearance rate and ACR and ranked, however, it uh, does have you know huge amount of scoring potential. So for eight tickets, it is still the number one recommendation. But maybe the quad cap just isn't worth it. That's a better use of tickets might be might be elsewhere. Looking at number two, we've got PD Piranha Me Racing Suit. This one's in ranked. Um, so let's try out the item inspector by clicking on the title there and clicking on compute improvements. And there we see, okay, so we've got a few, yes, yeah, so look at all those courses that's already PD Piranha Me Racing Suit as the number one driver. That's because it's level six and double capped. So there are massive amounts of value to take it, even just to level seven with a double cap. Um, obviously the cap being um, strong on the Me Racing Suit. That's really cool to see. I think some people have been thinking, and I, I was thinking that you need to max out Me's to make it worth it. but. Even at a level seven and double cap, this is gonna be the best on many, many courses. You can see a very long list there, four pages of courses. Obviously the most important ones being at the top, being higher weighted uh, courses. You see the course weight there, and of course being sorted by the weighted score. So Peach Gardens are being the most important course, but then some of these other ones, you know, very much appearing a lot right now. Um, and of course this tool, we do have some ranked appearance there as well. So important one to invest into. Um, then we've got Miyaza recommendation to go level eight and triple cap. And then we've got Mario King, level seven double cap, Luigi Knight, level seven double cap, so on and so forth. So I think probably the key theme is here for Crunchy Cheese to think about, dude, let me appeal to you right now about your account. Think about the items you really love to use. And I would say, actually pick one item and take it to a high level. Like for example, if you love using Miyaza, level eight, you know, take him to level eight. If you love Goldbean Racing Suit, take him to level eight. And if you want to as well, quad cap him if you, if you can justify that. Because at the end of the day, if you absolutely max out one of these drivers, and you can see the number of improved tracks here for Gold Me, 40 courses, that's absolutely insane. Miyaza is 32 courses, you know, it's it's just crazy. If you want to go for something new and you love Larry Wintertime, you don't mind a small hitbox, you know, 23 courses is fantastic for a driver starting out um, so early. And wow, wow, I just saw that he does love him because level eight and triple cap, so it's saying, do quad cap it, and I'm sure that's part of the plan. So that's my recommendation. Pick your um, pick your optimal items and go with them. If we jump down to the best item combinations now, um, let's uh, go ahead and run this. By default, you'll see the level tickets are quite high, and sometimes it may time out just purely due to the level of computation that it has to do. If you, if that happens, just give it less driver tickets to work with, because it's unlikely unless you're going for a crazy ACR run this tour uh, that you're going to be used uh, 30, 30 different tickets. So yeah, it's, it's actually timed out there already. So let me go ahead and change that to uh, 12 tickets there, whoops, and run it again. I'll leave the cap tickets as is. There we go, and there is the optimal item combinations for the drivers there. And of course, the number one is, is to take Gold Bean Racing Suit to 8.4. We can see the courses that are improved there. As, as well as that, you can see it appears really well with Larry Wintertime. So Gold Bean should be a safe bet to invest into alongside Larry Wintertime, which is great to see. Um, and then we've got some, you know, normals and, and supers uh, recommended there. All right, so Crunchy Cheese, there is your drivers. Let's move on to the carts. So number one, no surprises here. Dude, why is it still at level seven? Just take that thing to level eight. <laughs> and quad cap it, please. But um, in all seriousness, 37 courses for the yellow off-roader. Just absolutely insane. So if we just take a quick look at um, inspecting this one here, just look at this incredible list of courses that that's gonna improve. And you can see barely any city courses as well. Just, 
you know, yeah, some older retros, but really, really good. So it's in ranks, this tour. You can see this new feature of ticket time. Now it bolds the items which are in ranked, which is fantastic. Um, you can obviously inspect it and try to figure out which course is the ranked course, or obviously just look in the game. Um, second one is Red Off Road there. Let's run the item on op optimal combination to see what the overlaps might be like in a moment. Um, then we've got the Red Vampire Flyer. Also interesting to see Red Off Road and Lightning Streamliner, you've leveled both of those up. I do not recommend this. That, that is exactly the reason why I have not uh, invested in the Lightning Streamliner because I've been invested in the Red Off Rotor. Um, so that's why, you know, a couple tours apart, taking a, a cart to a high level may not make sense, um, which is why I'm going to talk about the Blue Crawly soon. That one's quite interesting, this tour, for, for some reasons. Um, but yeah, looking at this, um, some really great carts, but again, taking some of the ones you've already got to a high level is going to make sense. Um, maybe you're hesitating and you're keeping things at level six because you're scared of what might be the best items. So I would go based on sheer number of courses. So obviously yellow off-roader taking that to level eight is a no-brainer. And then maybe the red off-roader would be the one that would make the next most sense, um, being it's got 21 courses, great big hitbox, still getting new buffs, all of that kind of stuff. So um, you've got trouble track might, might be an option as well. So let's go look at the cards. I'm going to do the same thing here, give it 12 high-end level up tickets and see what it gives me as the optimal items. All right, so here we go. It is in fact putting red off-roader at the top of that list to 7-3 and then the combination would be pairing nicely with the flowery bad wagon. Obviously not quite as, you know, uh, new and in and optimal um so yeah even it's interesting seeing that it doesn't recommend the yellow off-roader in this as in this optimal thing um we can also force this let's have a play around let's uh let's let's enforce this in fact let's enforce the yellow off-roader 84 let's let's assume that you're going to do that um and let's maybe give this a few more tickets let's give this 15 15 all right, here we go. Cool. So still yellow off-roader and red off-roader is still good. It just has reduced the gain value of the red off-roader where there's overlap. So it, it's it's looking good. If you enforce, you say, well, yellow off-roader, I'm still going to invest in that. It's still going to be great. Red off-roader is still in that list, even over the yellow, uh, the, the red streamliner. So um, yeah, really, really interesting. Sorry, I should say lightning streamliner. Um, but there we go, there's your carts. Um, that would be the recommendation there. And let's now move on to the gliders. So number one here is the 8-bit 1-Up Mushroom. No surprises here. It's like we're talking about the yellow uh, off-roader all over again. So you can see 35 courses here. So the recommendation is to take that to level 8 and triple cap it. We've also got Candlelight Flight Cake. Nice to see someone else who invested there. I've invested in that one. Uh, Mint and Berry Balloons, Black Great Sail, Wonderful Wings, Candlelight Flight, Autumn Leaves. Yeah, lo lots of different ones here. Interesting again to see mint and berry balloons on the list because this also does have a lot of overlaps with the 8-bit 1-Up Mushrooms. So being a little bit more efficient with ticket coverage, maybe level 8, like maxing out your 8-bit 1-Up Mushroom in theory could have been a better use of the mint and berry balloons uh, because now you're probably not going to invest any further into the mint and berry balloons being the overlaps there will probably kill it off and they're always seeming to get just, yeah, a, a lot of similar courses. Um, not quite as bad of course as the tropical uh, sorry the piranha plant balloons that one's got even more overlaps um, but certainly not necessarily the most optimal item combination there um, so let's go ahead now and uh, look at the optimal item combinations with the gliders so I'll put 15 tickets there Okay, and interestingly, it's actually got this combination of the candlelight flight cake and the mint and berry balloons. So it hasn't even uh, included the 8-bit 1-Up Mushroom, and that will be because this combination will give you the most total gain, 496,000. So if we just remember that, let's enforce the 8-bit 1-Up Mushroom now. 496,000, let's compute again and see what we get. Okay, so 475,000. So this one is now, and you can see that that's exactly what I was talking about there. The mint and berry balloons has disappeared from the list and we've got candlelight flight cake to seven triple. So personally, this is the way that I would go because those eight bits are a great 
uh, way to make sure you got great coverage. But of course, the other option is great too, where you take mint and berry balloons to an even higher level, candlelight flight cake. These become your two best gliders, and where there's overlap with the 8-bit one at Mushroom, you will in instead use one of those gliders instead. Okay, I hope that helps. It's just a brief look at your account. Hopefully my interpretation has helped. If anyone has anything else that you noticed or that you saw or that you would um, do something different with Crunchy Cheese's account, make sure to put a comment down in the description down below. I hope you found it helpful, dude, and let's move on with the video. All right, so now we're taking a look at our new items and starting out, we've got Yellow Shy Guy Explorer. He looks cool, he's got the hammer skills, so non-plus skill driver, it's all good. He's a, he's a cool alt. He starts out at number 100 in the ticket time ranking, starting out with seven retro courses, um, and then he's got three nitro courses. So that's right, we are classifying uh, Piranha Plant Cove as a nitro course, which is with a heavy heart, right? We want it to come back more often but we're just being cautious about this course because if you look at sky high sunday that still has not come back in the entire time so far so wow it's it's been more than six months i think so um yeah it's it's hopefully it does come back more often but right now it, it, it it's not guaranteed to um looking now at yellow shy guy explorers coverage uh he got rock rock mountain uh, Riverside Park Tea, Sunset Wilds Tea, Mushroom Gorge and Mushroom Gorge Tea, Piranha Plant Slide RT, Cooper Cape RT, and then three Piranha Plant Cove courses. So it's not the greatest starting. He starts out as the lowest, even lower than the Brown Bee Racing Suit, which is quite interesting to see. And you can see what's really hurting him is the plus skill overlap. He has no courses without a plus skill, which is the kind of the new way of things. We don't really have non-plus skill courses anymore in this game. Um, and he has almost all completely uh, coin box overlap, apart from two courses, which are the boomerang only ones, which are in ranked week two. Uh, he has three overlaps with Gobby Racing Suit, which doesn't bode too well. Two with Larry Winter Time, two with Petey Piranha Gold, uh, two with Daisy Tide Dress, two with Yoshi Gold Egg. So you can see there isn't really much hope for him. He's probably gonna never hit the top 10 ever, um, which is sad to say, but hey, he's got a older big brother who we'll talk about in a minute. But first, let's take a look at the brown me racing suit. Okay, our next new driver, the brown me racing suit starts out at number one. The Brown Mia Racing Suit starts out at number 91 on the ticket time rankings. It has six retro courses and one of the Prana Plant Coves, Prana Plant Cove 2. And then in terms of its overlaps, it has three with Gold Mia Racing Suit and two with Yoshi Gold Egg. So looking at its courses, completely, you know, plus skill overlap again. Only one course that's boomerang only. The rest have coin box overlap. Of course, it's got the bob -omb cannon skill, so really not that interesting. Apart from picking it up to level up your base points, I don't really see much um, value to the brown me racing suit right now. All right, and now things get interesting with light blue shy guy explorer, a reskin of a reskin of a reskin, but he has a plus skill. He has lucky seven, and he starts out very strong at number 57 on the ticket time rankings with seven retro courses. He has Riverside Park, Riverside Park R, Snowland, Snowland T, Sunset Wilds R, Cookie Land, Sunset Wilds RT, and four different Piranha Plant Cove courses. So firstly, you can see, you know, Riverside Park R is a great course, having only Yoshi Kangaroo on that with the boomerang skill there. And then he also has Piranha Plant Cove 2R, which only has Boomerang and Lucky 7. He has Piranha Plant Cove 2RT, which is only has Boomerang, Giant Banana and Lucky 7, so no coin box. Um, and then he has Piranha Plant Cove RT, which only has Boomerang and Lucky 7. So some really nice buffs there. Some hard to cover courses, especially with only Larry Winter Time. I think it's Snowland. He uh, who has the level eight unlock there. So some really good value. I will definitely be picking him up. And we love to see this overlap list with the retros. Um, he's got two with Daisy Tide Dress, two with Larry Winter Time, and two with Daisy Holiday Cheer. And that's it. So that's really, really good starting value. It bodes very well for him. Uh, I think a lot of people will end up ta taking out to a relatively high level pretty quickly. He's the kind of, if you're a relatively, you know, gold pass to, to whale sort of category player, I would probably be taking out to level six and double capping him pretty soon. 
The only thing would be that some of his courses do overlap with other Lucky 7 drivers, um, including some Mies, so it's whether you are all in on the Mii um, racing suit game, because, you know, you get a level 6 and double capped, uh, you know, Lucky 7 Mii on the same courses, they are going to have a much higher scoring potential being those extra me basing base points. So something to consider for sure. But I think he's got a cool uh, he's got a cool design, and I think he will get some great ranked treatment going forward. So let's hope he gets the ch charging chuck treatment because charging chuck got some great great stuff. Okay, speaking of light blue, we've got the blue crawly cart, our first and actually only new cart this tour, and that is a very important point when it comes to this cart's starting value. Generally speaking with carts, we have a lot in this game. And if you get, uh, you know, for example, the tour where the Moo Moo Off-Roader came out, we also then had the Pink Speeder, I think, came out in the following tour. They got very similar buffs, and starting value was very similar with, I think, Riverside Park and DK Mountain both came back in the following tour. And so because of that, there were a lot of overlaps between those two carts. So you can't really be invested in both of these. With this Blue Crawley cart, we just came out of a city tour so you're probably not going to be invested in any of the carts there. So it kind of gets this clean slate where it's the only card in the store and there were no really great starting course as for the for the carts last tour. So you probably should just pick it up and invest in it. It's an interesting thing to say about a new card, but it's kind of got this window of opportunity with these Piranha Plant Cove courses. But again, the question comes down to how often were these Piranha Plant Cove courses you know, return. So maybe the thing to do with this one is to definitely make sure you purchase it if you are a someone who purchases packs. Um, but maybe don't hold, don't invest in it yet until you really need it in ranked incoming tours. But I definitely think it's going to get some good value because of those circumstances. And looking at its starting value, we can definitely see some clues along those same lines. So it starts out at number 110 in the ticket time ranking, which is not that great. It it, it can do a lot better, but I mean it's it's minimal starting value, also being nitro courses. Um, then looking at its starting value, it got Piranha Plant Slide, Piranha Plant Slide T, Snowland, Snowland T, Vanilla Lake 2, Vanilla Lake 2 T, and then four Piranha Clove courses. So really its long-term value will come down to how value those courses are and how often they return. So that's why I say that maybe holding off until you need it is the way to go. But I think it's going to get some great buffs in the next couple of tours. So watch the space. For me, I'm going to be considering picking this one up and probably probably getting it three times or something like that so I, so I can justify uh, leveling it up more later on down the track. Looking at its overlaps, it has three with the Shielded Speedster, which a lot of people have invested in, but I know equally a lot of people haven't invested in. Also two with the Tropical Truck, I also haven't invested in that, and the Piranha Pipes. These are three carts that I kind of missed out on on my main account, so this one fills a really nice niche as a starting point. Um, it does have two overlaps with Rambi Runner, and those, those, those Vanilla Lake courses are a little bit of a cautionary tale because we don't know the type of courses this one's going to be themed to. It may get a lot of snow ones after this tour, but we don't know for sure. Um, I just hope it doesn't end up just overlapping all over the place with a whole bunch of these ice carts. And you can see that already, you know, with the chair ship, Frosty Bells, Sleigh Rider, you know, Cheer Mallow. These are all winter themed, uh, holiday themed uh, carts. So we'll see where how it turns out, but I would say absolutely make sure to pick it up because if it's, if it's not useful to you now, it definitely will be in the future. Now moving into our gliders, we have the Gold Candlelight Flight, which starts out at number 95 in the ticket time rankings. It has seven retro courses and three Piranha Plant Cove courses. And then looking at its overlaps, it has three with Autumn Leaves, three with Sakura Origami Glider, two with Dragon Wings, two with Record Setter, two with Sky High Flyer, two with Wonderful Wings, two with Gold Hard Hat Balloon, Golden Wings, a whole bunch of different ones there. Nothing that stands out as really bad, but when we actually look at the courses it got, it didn't really get that much that's interesting. So obviously the Piranha Plant Coves are nice, um, so you at least have some kind of glider there on the top shelf, apart from the normal variant of Piranha Plant Cove, which is a level eight unlock. 
we got gotcha. you. Um, but yeah, Calamari Deserts, Cooper Capes, Rock Rock Mountains, uh, not really that great, guys. So it's a gold pass gift. What can we say? We, you know, at this point, we don't expect it to necessarily, you know, get much value. That's the gold candlelight flight. Now we take a look at the other glide of this tour, which is the wonderful diamond. And I think the thing with these, you know, the wonderful wings, the wicked topaz, the wonderful garnet, the wonderful diamond, every time people see them, I hear the same thing, which is, oh, it looks really cool. It's definitely going to be valuable. But that's just not the case with gliders, guys. Um, absolutely. Some of the ones that I just mentioned are super valuable or, or are quite valuable. Um, but the wonderful diamond could be terrible uh certainly based on its starting value it's not a great start um, number 89 in the ticket time rankings seven retros three piranha plant coves but it just got so many overlaps with other great gliders as well and it again got a whole bunch of older courses like vanilla lakes rock rock mountains yeah not a great start for that so um yeah i mean even those three overlaps with the festive holly festive holly i know is one that's quite got a nice niche that fits a lot of accounts including mine i'm going to be picking that up when that's available um things like that too with the wonderful wings isn't great some older courses here some older older overlaps not really great so wonderful diamond i would say if if you really like the look of it it could get some value in the future then definitely pick it up, but hold off on investing it till you really need to. All right, we've taken a look at what's new and now let's take a look at what's hot, what's gaining value in the ticket time rankings. So first up, Toad Astronaut. Let's check in with him and see how he's doing. He is now up to number 35 in the ticket time rankings. So he has jumped up seven places there since last tour and he has now 12 retro courses and six nitros, including two of the Piranha Plant Coves there. So he did get Sunset Wilds Tea, Mushroom Gorge, R, Piranha Plant Cove 2T and Piranha Plant Cove RT with one ranked appearance in week two. So great to see he's getting that exclusive ranked appearance. Very nice. Um, got 188 courses to see. He, he will definitely get his value. For me, it comes down to whether or not you like Boomerang. Um, and he does have some overlaps, you know, three with Lakitu Party Time, three with Mario Satellaview. A three with Luigi Painter, so quite a bit of Lucky Seven overlap, Charging Chuck 2 there as well. Um, three with Luigi Knight, quite a bit there. Um, not a heck of a lot of coin box overlap. He does have three with Yoshi Gold Egg and two with Daisy Tide Dress and two with Question Mark, Mark Block Me Racing Suit and uh, two with Charging Chuck Gold, but not, not too bad. I think he's got a decent amount of starting value. He will continue to gain attraction, and I'm sure it's only a matter of time before he's you know uh, up into the top 10, as most boomerang drivers do end up. So yeah, it really comes down to whether you value his skill and whether you like his design and whether you want to be invested into him, as opposed to, you know, to a high level, as opposed to some of these other drivers that he overlaps with. Okay, now checking in with Larry Wintertime. So it's been a few tours since he came out, but he still has 162 courses to see, which is nothing to uh, nothing to ignore at all there. He is up to number 17 in the ticket time rankings. He's jumped up six places since last tour, so continually gaining some value there. With 15 retro courses, he picked up Riverside Park T, Cooper Cape R, and that's it. So none of the new uh, Piranha Plant Coast, which is quite interesting. Maybe he will be more themed towards, you know, certain courses, maybe retros as opposed to the nitros. I don't know. Um, but yeah, certainly interesting to see that. Four overlaps with Petey Piranha Gold, three with the question mark block me racing suit, uh, two with Daisy Tie Dress, uh, two with Charging Chuck Gold, and then he does also have three with the Nabbit Me Racing Suit, Santa Me Racing Suit, Mario Satella View, two with Peach Happy. So quite a bit of, uh, yeah. Lucky Seven overlap there as well. Not a heck of a lot of Boomerang overlap, which is interesting. Two with Shy Guy Ninja. Um, but yeah, he's, he's got some decent value. I think he, you know, there's a reason I invested in him early. I knew he would get a decent amount of value. Um, you know, I'm still not planning on taking him to a high level, but it's really up to you personally how you deal with his hitbox size and where he fits into your inventory. 
Let's take a look at one more driver, the Nabbit Me Racing suit, obviously a Me suit. We don't talk about these ones all the time, so good to check in here. You can see it got one courses tool, which is Piranha Plant Cove 2T. Only 19 courses left to see, so really just the dregs at the bottom at this point. Um, so nice to see you got that new course there. And he is number 13 in the ticket time rankings, jumping up three places there. Uh, 20 retro courses is pretty okay for a me driver. 12 nitros as well, including that Piranha Plant Cove. And then overlaps, five with Mario Chef, five with Nabbit, four with Daisy Holiday Cheer, uh, from a Lucky Seven perspective, then looking at the Queen Box, three with Mario Tuxedo, three with Dry Bones Gold, three with Larry Winter Time, and three with Rosalina Swimwear, and then some more further down the list. So really it comes down to, do you like this driver enough to put it at that really high level so that you use it over these other drivers? So for some people, that's not interesting to them. For others, they just want to get those extra points. And, and if you're one of those people, then the Nabbit Me Racing Suit's looking really good, especially with this uh, new course here, though unfortunately it is not a ranked appearance. So only if you want it really, maybe you're an ACR player, um, it might make sense for you this tour. All right, and we didn't look at this last tour because of course I didn't do a episode last tour being a city tour, not really that much interesting to look at, but we did get this new cart, the Hot Pot Hot Rod, which has jumped up an, an insane, and I think probably record breaking, 127 places from where it was last tour. Basically, not even worth considering or or thinking about to uh, number 46 in the ticket time rankings, which is actually pretty respectful. Um, so it has it has now four retro courses and 10 nitros. It got Riverside Park T, Snowland R, Cookie Land, and Mushroom Gorge T. So at least a few courses that are actually super relevant. Um, and people have been saying this one's got a nice wide hitbox. It doesn't look massive, but it does actually have a decent hitbox um, there in terms of the width. And then looking at the overlaps, probably you know, the only concerns there would be the two with Mumu Off-Roader, two with the Secura Hot Rod, Flaming Speeder, uh, Combo Cruiser, these kind of ones here. Nothing too crazy, but of course, it only has four, four retros. So it might not be one to start investing into right now, but at least it's interesting. And it's still got 228 courses to see. So it could be a really amazing card. We'll just have to see how it turns out. I mean, I skipped it and probably you did too. So we'll have to wait for it to come back in the spotlight shop if it becomes super meta and super relevant. Um, but this might be one that's kind of slightly outside the meta of like the off-roaders and that but is still actually pretty good in terms of that hitbox. And if it gets great value, then that is awesome. So maybe maybe Nintendo like this card, I don't know. All right, another one I thought might be worth a mention is the Purple Dozer. So the Purple Dozer jumped up 12 places to number 34 in the ticket time rankings here. It now has 15 Nitro courses with still 176 courses left to see. And it got this tour, Piranha Plant Slide T, Rock Rock Mountain T, Cooper Cake T, and Sunset Wilds RT. Interestingly, they're all trick tracks. Often the dozers are connected with trick tracks in terms of trick tours and things like that. Not... I don't understand why it seems like the the cart you would least want to take over a jump um, out of all of them but yeah it, it seems to be the theme of these carts um, and then in terms of the overlaps here it does have four with piranha pipes looking at other large carts we've got three with the lightning streamliner tropical truck camo tanuki red vampire flyer gold trickster um what else coral jet cruiser not a lot of like really large carts and we've got off-roader here with two overlaps, but mostly kind of mid-sized sort of carts. And being a bigger one, this might be your best option. So quite a nice cart. Um, you may need it for ranked this week. And if that's the case, it could be one that if it fits your inventory nicely, then check it out. Make sure to run your ticket time rankings and, and see where it sits within them. All right, and then now we're gonna take a look at the Piranha Pipes. We haven't talked about this one recently, so I thought it was worth a rev revisit, seeing as it jumped up seven places to number 15 in the ticket time rankings. It's kind of one of these mid-tier sort of carts that's not the top, top echelon, but it's, it's quite nice. Um, it does have 20 retros and t 10 nitro courses. This tour, it just got Piranha Plant Cove, which is, which is great, it's in ranked. Obviously being a, 
um, nitro type of course, it might not be that interesting um, there. Now the Piranha Pipes only has 41 courses left to see in terms of buffs, but it still does seem to be getting some new courses, which is nice. Unfortunately, probably what's hampered, it, hampered its value is being quite themed, um, being a pipe related card, it seems that they've kind of kept it with, you know, things like um, a nostalgic sort of types of courses. Some, you know, you see some SNES, some 3DS, some GBA, um, and of course some Piranha Plant related stuff. Um, looking at its overlaps, six with the yellow 8 bit pipe frame, five with the shielded speed switch, which is quite substantial there, four with the jukebox buggy, lightning streamliner, red off rotor, red vampire flyer, silver king, parable dozer, yeah, what else? Three with the yellow off rotor, so quite a lot of overlaps, which is probably what's hurt its value the most. Um, yeah. I know for me on my free-to-play account, I've got it at level 5, but the overlaps with the red off-roader have really hurt it quite a lot. Um, there we go, Piranha Pipes. Okay, so gliders do take a little bit longer to go up the list, but the yellow hard hat balloon seems to be getting some really nice buffing favour. It's jumped up uh, quite a few places the last couple of tours, and in this tour it's jumped up 15 places to number 55 in the ticket time rankings. It has 13 retro courses and 6 nitros, and this tour it got Rock Rock Mountain R, Riverside Park, Piranha Plant Cove 2 and Piranha Plant Cove 2T. So some ranked appearance there, which is really nice. And yeah, some, some decent amount of coverage there with only with already 13 courses. 176 courses left to see is, is pretty substantial. And then looking over laps, we've got five with the Silver Candlelight Flight, four with the Autumn Leaves, and three with a bunch here. You can see yeah, Boo Masks in there, Red and Gold Umbrella... What else is interesting? 8-bit bullet bill, we've got two there. Yeah, but but nothing too crazy. I think it's got some really nice starting value. Um, and if I could go back to this tour, I probably would have invested into this one rather than the gold hat, hard hat balloon because this one seems to have gotten much better courses. I don't know what's happening with that gold hard hat balloon, but it just it's going to be a late bloomer or it's, it's going to be terrible, honestly. It, it seems really, really poor um, in terms of the buffs that it's getting each tour. All right, so while we're talking about the gold hard hat not getting the value that we think it deserves, let's go ahead and just take a quick break before we jump into the top 10 and take a look at Flo's winners and losers of the tour. So first up, we've got her driver's light blue Shy Guy Explorer, which we've already talked about, getting some great buffs there. Um, the Snowland, Riverside Park R, um, you know, Snowland T, um, even Cookie Land. Yeah, some really, really promising start. So hopefully he it turns out well. Then we've got the PD Piranha Me Racing Suit. Somehow, obviously, in this tour, it's getting decent coverage lately for a Me Suit and a double ranked appearance with rather rather difficult to cover courses. So quite interesting. Definitely take a look at these ones in your rankings and see where they sit. See where it's with it whether it's worth investing there as well. Um, and then we've got some losers, um, but Mario King, a lot of people commenting on the fact that he got very poor buffs this tour. Calamari Desert. Versus Charging Shark Gold, who came out, you know, similar tour, similar set of circumstances with the buffs there, but he got Piranha Plant Cove 2T as a unique. So you can see how different their buffs are, really disappointing. Um, even disappointing for me, I want Mario King's value to increase so that when I get him, then he's like Daisy Tigress, you know, he's, he's really super valuable, but really disappointing there for Mario King. And then we've got Petty Piranha Gold, he only got one buff in this tour, so he's not going to be able to hold on to his lead if he continues to not get some decent buffs there. Looking at the carts, we've got the Hot Pot Hot Rod, really interesting, especially that Snowland R course, really big, um, you know, big buff there, being the widest cart there now, and some decent buffs and a ranked appearance. Then we've got Yellow Off-Roader, do we need to say more guys, cart's insane, two amazing buffs there, double ranked appearance rather, and um, yeah, seven ACR appearances. It's absolutely insane. Then we've got Moo Moo Off-Roader and the Pink Sneaker. Interesting cards. Obviously, obviously Moo Moo is a great card. Um, they didn't get decent buffs this tour, so losing out there. Then we've got the Gliders, 8-bit 1-up Mushroom, basically the yellow off-roader of the Gliders. Uh, it got one buff and even two ranked appearances. Half a year old, but still in ranked and getting better. Totally agree there, man. Um, then we've got the gold hard hat balloon. 
Yeah, it seems like a late bloomer. It's it's gold pass seem to be on a gold pass gift level, which is not good. We don't want that. So hopefully it has a big comeback, but I'm, I'm not super hopeful at this stage and I'm not investing any further until we start to see Nintendo starting to shift that uh, buffing kind of favor there in, in this direction. Then we've got tropical balloons. Nothing much in in you know um, in terms of buffs this tour. So, but disappointing there. And then the wonderful diamond, really not great in terms of you know it's got some overlaps with things like the eight bit super mushroom, the black star shoot, candlelight flight, silver candlelight flight, tropical balloons. These are all great gliders. So pretty disappointing start there for the wonderful diamond as well. There we go, there's the winners and losers of the tour. Now let's go and make a quick dive into the ticket time top 10 and round out the video. And let's start with the drivers. All right, in number 10th place, we have Rosalina Volendam up two places. Very nice. Then we've got Mario King, number nine, holding steady there. Miyaza done one place to number eight. The PD Piranha Me racing suit in number seven. PD Piranha just ahead. Uh, in number six, then question mark block me racing suit, Daisy Tidress and Luigi Knight holding down places three through seven. These guys are pretty solid there. Then we've got Charging Chuck Gold in number two and the Gold Me Racing Suit, our number one driver in the game still. It's been an insane amount of time now, guys, but with this amount of tracks, that's just, it's it's just bound to happen. Um, so I do want to take a look at two different drivers. I want to compare the two PD Piranhas because we're getting some exclusives and some, some ranked um, appearances this tour. So let's go ahead and take a look. Firstly, at the PD Piranha Me Racing Suit. All right, so the PD Piranha Me Racing Suit is number seven in the ticket time rankings with 17 retros, seven nitros, and it got Piranha Plant Cove 2 and Piranha Plant Cove 2R. It has only 41 courses left to see, so you can, you can see it's kind of only going to cap out around kind of 20-ish courses that are retro, so it's not really that great. Um, six overlaps with PD Piranha, so you want to look at one of these or the other. Um, but yeah, some great ranked appearances there in both weeks, and very, very exclusive courses. Only one overlap with the Lucky 7 character there, otherwise it's just boomerang all the way, guys. So PD Piranha Me Racing Suit, yeah, small amount of courses, but some pretty exclusive stuff. Okay, in contrast, the PD Piranha, um, himself, he has 28 courses in number six place. Um, this tour he got Piranha Plant Cove 2 and Piranha Plant Cove R. Again, very exclusive courses, and you can see they're really saying, hey, this is this is Petey Piranha, he needs this course, you know, he's related. There's a theming perspective going on here. Again, only 41 courses left to see, um, but 28 retro courses is much more respectful than the me suit, so it really comes down to the scoring potential that you're going to get on those 17 courses versus the 28 that Petey Piranha has got. Um, overlaps, you got six with the Petey Piranha Me Racing Suit. Then in terms of plus skill, five with Petey Piranha Gold, which is a bit killer for my account, uh, being I'm invested heavily there. We've got three with Yoshi Gold Egg there as well. And then Lucky Seven, we've got four with Nabbit, four with Lakidu Party Time. Um, and then a whole bunch of different, uh, you know, boomerang overlaps as well. But he's got his value. He's, he's got a really nice set of value, Petey Piranha, for sure. I need to look at him for my own rankings, to be honest, and see if he's worth you know me investing into or the or the me racing suit. All right, now looking at the top ten carts in the game right now in Mario Kart Tour, we've got in number tenth place holding steady the yellow off roader still in the top ten after I don't know eighteen months, is it? It's it's insane. Then we've got the red vampire flyer. Uh, they're holding steady in number nine, Flaming Speeder down one place to number eight, The Sweet Ride down one place to number seven, Lightning Streamliner up two places to number six, The Strawberry Soft Swerve down two places to number five, Red Off Roader up one place to number four, Green Cat Cruiser down one place to number three, Streetle up two places to number two, and the Shielded Speedster is still the number one cart in the game. So there we go, guys. That's the carts. I do want to take a look at a couple of interesting ones in here. Let's take a look first at the Lightning Streamliner. All right, so this cart is a really good one. It does, unfortunately, overlap seven times with that Red Off-Roader, which is probably the most notable uh, thing about it. It is up, though, uh, a substantial um, amount of places, you know, um, up two places there to number six in the ticket time rankings with the 21 retro courses and the 11 nitros. This tour only got Piranha Plant Cove 2, 
but it is a ranked appearance there. Very nice. Um, only 41 courses left to see. It's a nice cart. Um, it just really comes down to if you're invested into the Red Hot Frodo or not. So I think that's probably the most notable thing that does hurt its value. But it, of course, it started out so strong. Um, it's kind of tapered off quite substantially since those days and the red off rotor still seems to be going strong so the consensus is still out on which one of these two will end up reigning supreme in terms of the best cart um, but but my vote personally because of that hitbox is definitely the red off rotor let's go ahead and take a look at that one now Okay, so straight away we can see the slight edge here going on for the Red Off-Roader. It went up one place to number four with 20 retro courses there and nine nitros. It got Piranha Plant Cove 2RT there. It has 51 courses left to see, so 10 more than the Lightning Streamliner. And then again, you see those overlaps with the seven with the Lightning Streamliner. It's got six with the Classic B-Dasher, uh, six with the Shielded Speedster, so on and so forth. Uh, five with the Yellow Off-Road is probably the most annoying thing about the red off-roader which is why I've kind of kept it at level six for now and I've been waiting for it to kind of get better um, so you know you can see in this in the case of this tour there is no ranked appearance there's no ranked exclusive buff um, and so based on that you know I probably won't end up leveling it up further this tour even though you know it, it is very very good for my account and I'm using it on almost all of its courses um, so th there we go red off-roader very nice um, great cart Let's go ahead and look at one more cart, which is in the number two place. It is the Streetle. And you can see this one's had a similar buff this tour with Piranha Plant Cove 2, but also it got Piranha Plant Cove T. And most importantly, Piranha Plant Cove 2 is in ranked, which is very nice. So the Streetle did jump up two more places to number two in the rankings. It has got 20 retro courses, eight nitros. Of course, the problem being it has a small hitbox. So pretty amazing cart with 92 courses still left to see. Um, and then in terms of its overlap, six with the Gold Trickster, five with the Strawberry Soft Swerve, four with the Camo Tanuki, Red Vampire Flyer, uh, it's got three with the flowery bad wagon, some kind of, you know, midway uh, semi semi meta carts, but really this one's got a great set of courses. Unfortunately, it just doesn't have the hitbox you kind of need for all that coin box. You can also see the overlap here with the coin box images, how many courses it has, which are coin box ones. You can see for me, I don't want to be using this cart on these ones. I'm, I'll happily use some of these other options that I'm invested into, like for example, the Cact Bee. Uh, but that's just me. The Streetle is one that I think is, is very, very worth investing into or looking into for your account. Maybe not taking it to as high a level as other carts, um, but certainly having it on your account is, is valuable. All right, and last up, the top 10 gliders in the game. Number 10, we've got the Black Star Shoot up three places. So good to see the Black Star Shoot in the top 10. I've been worried for a while that it's not gonna, it's just gonna completely drop off and the Boo Masks is really the winner of the overlap war. Um, but uh, yeah, really nice to see that. It got that nice ranked appearance this tour and it's, it's recommended quite highly in my rankings personally, which is nice. Um, number nine is the Piranha Plant Balloons, up one place to number nine. Then we've got Sil Silver Luigi's Moustache down three places to number eight. Candlelight Flight Cake up two to number seven. Again, nice to see that in the top 10. Tropical Balloons down two to number six. Boomas up three to number five, still strong, which is great. Um, Luigi's Hat Balloon up two places to number four. Vanilla and Chocolate Balloons, the number three cut glider in the game, down one place there from number two. And then the 8-bit 1-up Mushroom, up one place to number two with Mario's hat balloon holding out the number one place. It's interesting because probably most people will be thinking, huh, really the Mario's hat balloon? What's up with that glider? As we covered last time, Mario's hat balloon does have a lot of overlap with some other big name gliders, most notably the 8-bit 1-up mushroom. So you're not going to be invested in both of those gliders for sure. Um, and, and that can really hurt the value. Even though in this ranking it's strong, for your account it may not be strong if you're already invested in, say, the 8-bit 1-up mushroom. So let's take a look at a couple gliders and then we're going to round out the video. All right, the Black Star Shoot, it is number 10 in the Ticket Time rankings with 22 retro courses. This tour it got Piranha Plant Cove 2RT and Piranha Plant Cove RT there. It has 51 courses left to see. 
I don't know if it's going to be the greatest glider of all time. I think that's probably quite clear that it won't be at this point. Um, it does have eight overlaps with the Boom Master there, six with the Candlelight Flight, um, Black Cat Parafoil, Flybury Book, Origami Glider, Lava Rocks, five with the 8-Bit Bullet Bill. Um, yeah, I mean, if I look at this list, the thing that I note is I don't have a single glider on here which is higher than level six and double capped. So um, apart from, you see, if we go further down here, Wonderful Wings, Golden Wings, we've got three overlaps there. So certainly if I was to take this one to a higher level, it would upgrade courses. It is frustrating though when you want the glider to get the exclusive courses where you don't have coverage or you've only got level one coverage or low coverage. Um, so this is one for me which kind of makes sense to take things to a high level as opposed to say the candlelight flight which is much older um, but it is not necessarily the greatest buffs for a glider. Okay, now taking a look at another top 10 glider, we've got the Candlelight Flight Cake, which jumped up two places to number seven in the ticket time rankings with 20 retros and an insane 19 nitro courses, which is pretty bananas there. This tour, it just got Piranha Plant Cove T, which is just an ACR appearance. Really nice though to see that still getting those buffs. Um, you can see that you know the nitro courses have haven't necessarily hampered the long term value of this because it's still getting that usage rate when there's nitro courses there and usage when there's retro courses there too. Um, it has 41 buffs left to see or courses left to see, and its overlaps most notably are seven with the tropical balloons. Um, five with the chocolate pretzel, five with the Super Mario Kart glider, five with the pretzel glider, and then four with a bunch there. But nothing too crazy. As we go further down the list, you'll see, you know, three with the eight bit one up mushroom and, and ones like that. But, but really not too bad a glider in terms of the overlaps. All right, so let's now look at the last glider and we'll round out the video. The 8-Bit 1-Up Mushroom up one place to number two in the rankings, only beaten out by that Mario Hat Balloon, which has seven overlaps there. Um, but we can all probably agree that this is the winner <laughs> in terms of the courses it's gotten. And so this toy gets that ranked one appearance as well as, uh, you know, a new buff as well as a double feature in ranked, which is very nice. It's got 41 courses left to see but 25 retros 10 nitros that's the kind of meat and potatoes you kind of want to see when it comes to a gliders coverage and we love this thing at this point i've got this eight quad capped it's my only level eight quad capped glider and i have no regrets um, great having that mega mushroom skill which doesn't overlap or or cause issues with coin box when you are in that first to kind of fifth place there which is really good um, yeah, it's just a great glider all around. And of course, if you're invested in the Mario's Hat Balloon or Piranha Plant Balloons or some of these other ones, it's not going to make sense. But for most people, this is just a no-brainer at this point. All right, guys, that's absolutely it for this video. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at Ticket Time, some of the changes that are coming. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at an example of someone's rankings and how we use Ticket Time to look at our optimal combinations, get a real overview of our account, and then I hope you enjoyed looking at the items which are gaining value, the top 10 items, some of the winners and losers this tour. This has been a whole bunch of information, so I hope it's useful. If you liked it, make sure to hit hit like if you loved it make sure to hit subscribe and please leave me a comment down below letting me know what you want to see in future videos what you love um, and what you want to see more of from the channel i hope that you enjoy these videos and i hope that you can share it with someone else so that we can keep growing the channel guys we're about to hit 900 subscribers so i'm so excited we are <laughs> we're so close to 100 people away from that 1k mark it's, it feels like acr top 1000 all again so I'm, I'm super excited to hit that mark sometime in the coming months. Um, but we are continuing to grow as a channel where our Discord community is getting close to 200 members. So help us get there by joining with the link in the description down below. But don't just join, get involved. We want to see our Discord members 
uh, get involved in what we're doing and there's so much going on on the server it's 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 a place of yeah lots of action and lots of um uh everyone's there to kind of help each other whether you're into auto clickers whether you want to um, check out more data behind the scenes with ticket time or need help with your investments uh, if you want to invent in, enter into our race highlights competition anything like that make sure to click the links in the description down below and most importantly try out ticket time on your own account and see what's gained value for you. Thanks, that's been it guys. Take care and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.